All right, uh, so um, the last video for chapter two ended a little uh, sooner than I anticipated, so I just want to real quickly add on uh, to that. Um, I have to keep my videos limited to 15 minutes just because of the program I'm using. It's a free software, and uh, it's just kind of a silly restriction that it has. But I was, as I was saying, um, some of the findings that I had from our survey uh, were kind of interesting. There was uh, uh, actually a very even distribution uh, of males and females uh, among the engineers based upon the same sort of distribution of gender in the class more broadly. Um, so in, if you considered uh, engineers to be sort of a subsample within our larger population, which would be the class, um, then the sample actually matches up with the population parameters, as we would say. Uh, another interesting thing that I found is that uh, among the five people that are undeclared in their major, all five are male. Uh, there are no undeclared females, in this class at least. Um, so if we were able to generalize that, we could perhaps come up with something or find some theory that perhaps women are more decisive or uh, more career oriented or something along those lines. Uh, I mean, I'm just speculating here, but, uh, but I thought that was an interesting kind of finding. Um, you know, but sometimes uh, uh, these types of things can be a little misleading. I mean, this is a small sample size, so it's hard to make a lot of, uh, of uh, conclusions uh, about this. But, uh, but I just thought that would be a fun exercise just to show you guys what it's like um, to take a survey and, uh, and, and how we kind of deal with the, with the results of those. So the uh, textbook also goes over a number of different methods for social research. Uh, I talked about participant observation a little bit earlier, um, which is, it can be a very interesting one, especially if you're studying a, an interesting group. There's some great studies out there about people that have spent time among uh, police officers, They've spent time in mental hospitals, asylums, um, people who spend time among like religious cults or among political activist groups uh, and things like that. I mean, it's that can be really, really interesting uh, uh, stuff to find out about and study. Um, and sometimes it can be dangerous, and sometimes uh, it also brings up some some ethical quandaries. Uh, one of the things that they talk about in the textbook as well is this idea of reflexivity. Um, and this is very important because, you know, we're all humans and as people, you know, we all have our own opinions and beliefs about things and we have our own implicit biases. You know, there are certain things that we like and don't like. And so it's, it's difficult when we're studying the social world because it's very easy for these things to color our own vision um, and to um, you know, influence our own sociological imagination, as it were. But um, the real challenge is to, is to be objective, you know, to learn how to distinguish between the difference uh, between your personal opinions and beliefs and objective facts about things. You know, you may believe something very strongly, and to you that may be true, um, but to be objective means sort of taking a step back and separating yourself from the situation and observing or measuring the situation uh, as it is uh, and not influencing it uh, with your own beliefs uh, and opinions and that, that sort of thing. And that can be extremely difficult for some people, you know. Um, for example, if you have very strong religious beliefs, it may be difficult for you to study uh, uh, an atheist group or something because you inherently might want to like disagree or argue with with these folks. But you know this this is a problem a lot when we do. Um, uh, for example, the Pew Survey has a very famous uh, uh, study they've been doing for many years now called the Religious Landscape Survey, in which they look at the entire country, uh, and actually in, they do the entire world, um, and they look at the number of people that are parts of uh, all the different religions and how often 
times of day people pray, how often they go to church, how strongly they believe, and they measure things like how religious belief is changing over time and in different groups. And if you were, a, you know, perhaps a strong religious person yourself, you may have a difficult time carrying out that study. Um, but, you know, doing real social science is being able to objectively measure uh, the world as it is uh, and not to allow your own personal beliefs and opinions to to interfere with that so um, you know take some time and think about that think about um, what kind of things that you believe in what kind of things might you have trouble um, studying in the real world um, you know, uh, this would be a, this is something if we were doing a, an in-class, uh, uh, if we had class time and a lecture, I'd probably have an exercise about this and we could have a nice discussion about it in class. But uh, since we don't get to do that, you know, just take some time on your own and think about it. You know, think about your own opinions and your own biases because we all have them. And, uh, and it can be difficult sometimes to recognize them and, and learn to be able to step back and truly be objective uh, about what we study. So um, the book also has some interesting stuff about uh, writing a research paper, about coming up with ideas for a study. Um, and they talk about ethics uh, in social research, which is another important issue. Um, so be sure and read all that carefully. And, uh, and don't forget to do the reading quiz, uh, the quizzes that, that are at the end of the chapters. And, uh, and that's about all I have for you this week. So, excuse me. Um, oh yeah, and be sure and read the, uh, the additional uh, reading for chapter two as well. Uh, I forgot to mention that. That's also about uh, ethical issues that can arise uh, during uh, social research. And uh, particularly when, you know, personal biases come into play. And sometimes maybe even people are tempted to uh, skew their results or their data uh, or manipulate data. You know, it's happened before and people have been caught doing it and it can pretty much destroy your entire career. Um, so that's, it's a very good article. Uh, it's a short one. So give that a read also. Uh, there may very well be a question about it on the midterm exam. So, all right. Um, uh, good luck with your reading and, uh, and I'll have another video up uh, for next week. Thanks.